Thank you, Mary Ann, and uh, welcome into uh, Good Shepherd this morning. Uh, we got uh, blessed with a little rain this morning, but uh, thankful to be in the Lord's sanctuary as we uh, gather here this morning. Also want to thank you all for your uh, prayers. Uh, my travels uh, this week went well, other than the five gate changes at O'Hare on my way home, but that also blessed me with plenty of exercise, so uh, that was good as well. People are still flying. O'Hare was as busy as it was this summer, and uh, a lot of young people, so I don't know if people aren't in school or what's going on. But uh, anyways, I was blessed to be with my uh, friend and his wife, and uh, we had a nice time together. So again, thank you for your prayers. And this morning we will be praying. Uh, we have about 10 people uh, gone this morning who last Sunday told me they would be uh, gone for a week or two. So we'll have a general prayer for travel for all of them this morning. We want to welcome any visitors that are with us today. We uh, pray that the Lord would uh, bless your worship and uh, be with you in whatever you might be doing. Our order of service today will be the Divine Service setting number four. That's on page 203. Our opening hymn is 851. It is entitled, Lord of Glory, You Have Bought Us. We'll stand on the fourth and final verse.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, Seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro for this day, which we will read responsibly, is from Psalm chapter 54, and is printed in your worship folder. O oh God, save me by your name, and vindicate me by your might. For strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. He will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Our service of the word will continue on page 204 with our Kyrie. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all in our midst who are traveling this week and next, let us pray to the Lord. the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. And finally, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose strength is made perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith, that we may be committed to the Lord's cause in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this 18th Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 18 through 20. These verses will serve as text for this morning's sermon, and you can find it printed on the back of the worship folder. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew, then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me. They devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously and test the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Epistle Read, which you will also find on the back of your worship folder, today begins in the book of James, chapter 3, verse 13, and we will read through chapter 4, verse 10. We do this as a congregation, and we read it together. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? Your desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have, because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearned jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Will you please rise?
Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee, and Jesus did not want anyone to know. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, o Christ. Before we have our confession of faith, the Apostles' Creed, just a reminder, our sermon hymn will be singing the first five verses today. And also, Marianne, there will be no pulpit surprise this morning either. So... Let us confess the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, very God of very God, begotten God. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us sin and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was departed by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the conscious life. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I have gone to come back to the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Our text for this morning will be our Old Testament lesson from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 11, verses 18 through 20. Dear friends in Christ, to what are you committed? What commitments have you made in your life? Dr. Paul Farmer grew up an impoverished in an old bus his father, mother, and four siblings lived in. Paul was intelligent with a photographic memory. He graduated from Duke and then Harvard with a medical degree and Ph.D. His accomplishments are numerous. He dedicated his career to find ways to combat major health problems among the poorest of the poor. He started his work in Haiti, but it soon stretched around the globe. He became a world-renowned expert on the subject, and by his mid-40s, a best-selling book was written about him. In February 22, Dr. Farmer died of a heart attack working on a health project in Rwanda. He was 62. The public health community said they had lost a giant. Farmer had spent his whole career committed to the cause of improving health care for the poor around the world. He was all in for the cause. The prophet Jeremiah is committed to the cause of which God has called him. He is to make known the word of God to the people of Judah. He is to call Judah to repent of their idolatry. Can we be like Jeremiah, committed to the Lord's cause? Many of you may know Jeremiah is the weeping prophet. You see, he cries a lot because his family and hometown are plotting against him. He will suffer hardship and he will suffer persecution. And Jeremiah gets just a taste of the betrayal that would happen to Jesus. And like the Lord God, Jeremiah was trying to bring salvation to the people. Yet the more he did so, the more infuriated they were toward him. Have you ever been betrayed by family or friends? Are there those who pull away from you because you're trying to share the gospel with them? Do you have a certain challenge right now that you are up against? You see, God knew the scheming of the people before Jeremiah did. And he revealed it directly to Jeremiah. And God knows the troubles and challenges we face even before we do. We can feel like Jeremiah lost, confused, a lamb led to the slaughter. Now Jeremiah was not married. He had no direct descendants. But you notice in his text, the people still want him annihilated. It says there, his name be remembered no more. They hated Jeremiah, but the real hatred was toward God. Everything about God had to be eliminated. It looks overwhelming to Jeremiah, so he takes it to the Lord. But things don't look good for this prophet. But he does not waver in his commitment. I understand that. Don't you? I've been called a commitment foe my whole life. And I got that from my parents. You say you're going to do something, you do it. But at times it doesn't make life easy. How do you see yourselves? Are you committed like Jeremiah, or are you a little more wishy-washy about what you should be doing? You see, being committed means sacrifice. Being committed can mean suffering. 
And in being committed, you need to see the difference it's going to make. And Jeremiah saw that. He trusted in God's righteousness, the righteousness of the Lord of hosts. And God cared about Jeremiah. And God cares what is happening in our world. And he cares what is happening in your individual lives. And Jeremiah saw people getting angry and angry and angrier. Oh, we see that tone around us. People can lose it over the silliest things. The townspeople of Ananathoth, the hometown of Jeremiah, they are losing it. They are plotting to kill the guy. And Jeremiah wants to work to save these people. That is commitment. I have been reading a book of Christian martyrs over the years, and their commitment to the gospel always stands out. You know, I appreciate the groundwork that they have laid. But, you know, I also tend to notice that maybe there was a better avenue, not as dangerous, a way to stay alive and still continue the work. And that's Jeremiah's story. The Lord brought justice. The vengeance of the Lord was a fair retribution against those who had fallen away from God. And Jeremiah put his trust in the lasting and final justice of God that he would provide in the coming Messiah. The Savior who would take away the sin of the world. And we can have that same trust in the life, the atoning death, and the victorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. And like Jeremiah, we can commit our cause to the way of the Lord. We know the Lord is our strength. He is our shield. It gives us confidence, just like Jeremiah. Jeremiah would cover the reigns of the last five kings of Judah. He would continue to stay committed by denouncing the policies and idolatries of his nation. Can we do the same? Remember this. God is faithful. God is just. God is caring. It strengthens us to stay committed to the Lord's cause. Amen. Please rise for the prayer of the church. I will complete each petition this morning with Lord in your mercy. Will you please respond back? Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have taken us from all nations and united us in the body of your Son. Send your Holy Spirit to rid your children of all bitter jealousy boasting and selfish ambition. Fill the baptized with your wisdom that we may lead peaceable lives with sincerity and love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your loving kindness, you do not abandon your children to suffer alone, but promise to care for all who call upon your name. Bless the homebound, the lonely, the depressed, the anxious, those who continue to recover. We continue to pray for Nancy, Jackie, Joyce, Marlene, Shay Lynn. Comfort them in their distress. Heal all their ills of body and soul and grant them peace. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord of hosts, your son was cut off from the land of the living on the tree of the cross, that we might eat and drink the fruit of his body 
and blood and live forever. Grant that we may worthily receive his supper in remembrance of him. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, with Pastor Ewan of Christ Lutheran taking the call to Wisconsin, our circuit needed a new visitor, and this past week, President Moore named Pastor Smith of our Redeemer in Bloomington to that office. We pray that you would give him strength and wisdom in this calling, that he would continue to lead our circuit, and that you would guide everything that he does. Be with him through your power and your grace, Lord, in your mercy. Father, grant that what we ask you may not be squandered after our passions, but sought rightly in faith, that we may rightly receive them, put them into service for you and our neighbors, and remain committed to the Lord's cause. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will continue our worship on the top of page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us, and have given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by the second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
praise. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, and uh, the peace of the Lord be uh, with you during this next week. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, we're going to keep the containers out there for members who uh, want to grab one for our thank offering uh, through uh, next summer when we uh, have our uh, 25th anniversary of being here in this church. And uh, I will, uh, we'll keep those out through next Sunday, but I think uh, by now most of you have been able to pick those up. Also, uh, next Saturday is our blood drive. That'll be in the basement of the church. Jessica Isaac will be out at the table uh, after church, uh, so you can get signed up for that. If you've never given or not sure, this is a great time to do it. You're around uh, church people, and uh, if anything happens to you, we'll be there to pray for you. So, uh, But everything works out well, and uh, I've given for years, and I uh, hope you can come downstairs and join us. We'll also have a breakfast uh, that morning as well, and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you all there. Does anyone have any other announcements? No. You do? No. Oh, no? Yes. yes. What is your announcement? My birthday's on Friday. Your birthday's on Friday. All right. Happy birthday. Okay. Friday. <laughs> Congratulations. 